Go ahead. The world was changing. Each morning, when Fletcher bounded out of the den, everything seemed just a little bit different. The rich green of the forest was turning to a dusty gold, and the soft, swishing sound of summer was fading into a crinkly whisper. Fletcher's favorite tree looked dull, dry, and brown. Fletcher was beginning to get worried. I think my tree is sick, said Fletcher. What's wrong with it? his mother asked. Its leaves are turning brown, said Fletcher. Don't worry, it's only autumn, she said. Fletcher ran back to his tree and padded through the bark. Don't worry, it's only autumn, he said. You'll be feeling better soon. But the tree didn't get better. Each day, more leaves turned brown. One morning, the wind blew a small brown leaf off of a branch. Fletcher jumped up and caught it very gently in his paw. Don't worry, tree. I've got your leaf. I'll fix you. Fletcher looked around, picked a piece of grass, and carefully tied the leaf to a branch. Just then, another gust of wind ruffled Fletcher's fur. The little leaf shook itself free and fluttered back to the ground. Fletcher picked it up again and thought very hard. Then he poked the leaf onto a twig and pushed it down firmly. Now you hold tight, said Fletcher. No more flying around. The little leaves gave a tiny rustle in reply. The next day a strong wind was blowing through the forest. Fletcher rushed out of the den and ran all the way to his tree. Lots of branches were bare, and little lost leaves spun everywhere. Don't worry, tree. I'll catch them for you, I promise. Round and around and around whirled Fletcher after the swirling leaves. Leaves, wonderful, just what I need for my nest, said a squirrel. But these leaves belong to the tree, said Fletcher. Don't take them away. The tree doesn't need them anymore, said the squirrel, bounding off. Help, help, the wind and the squirrel are stealing our leaves, cried Fletcher. Leaves! Terrific! Just what I need to keep warm, said a porcupine, rolling around. But these belong to the tree, said Fletcher, plucking leaves from the porcupine's needles. Not anymore, snuffed the porcupine, and he rolled away. Help! Help! The wind! The squirrel! The porcupine are stealing our leaves, cried Fletcher. Suddenly, a flock of friendly birds swooped down from the sky. They picked up the leaves in their beaks and poked them onto the tree's branches. Soon the tree was leafy again, and Fletcher flopped down and smiled. Thank you, birds, thank you. He gasped as the birds fluttered away. He lay looking up through the leaves at the sky and drifted off to sleep. But the wind continued to blow, and the branches still danced. The leaves shivered and shook themselves and began to wriggle free. They tossed and turned and twitched and twirled and tumbled to the ground. They brushed Fletcher's ears and nose and filled his dreams with whispering sound. When Fletcher finally woke up, he couldn't believe his eyes. Instead of a roof of dancing leaves, all he could see were bare branches against the sky. Oh, tree, I'm so sorry, gulped Fletcher. All your leaves are gone. But then he saw high in the branches one small leaf still holding on. I won't let the wind steal that one, said Fletcher, and he began to climb. He crawled along the last leaf and held it firmly to its branch. All day long, 
the wind blew, the branch bounced, and Fletcher held tight. I'll stay with you, Leaf, he said. Don't worry. But then, with a sudden whoosh of wind, the branch bounced high with a plip, the leaf let go, and fluttered like a little flag clutched in Fletcher's paw. Fletcher looked sadly at the leaf he had promised to save. He carried it carefully down the tree and back to the den. He made a cozy little bed for it and gently tucked it in, but all night long he could only think of his tree, all on its own. At dawn Fletcher tiptoed outside. The wind had finally stopped blowing and the air was cold. The moon still hung in the clear sky and pale stars glimmered. As he came to his favorite tree, Fletcher saw a magical sight. The tree hung with a thousand icicles, shining silver in the early light. You're more beautiful than ever, he whispered. But are you all right? A tiny breeze shivered the branches, making a sound like laughter. And in the light of the rising sun, the sparkling branches nodded. Fletcher gave his tree a hug. Then he went back to the den for a nice, warm breakfast. The end. Okay, Chicago, what's going on? This is the view from my window. Outside, I'm seeing a beautiful tree bud and blossom uh, showing all the signs of springtime. Just a few weeks ago, that tree was looking very barren, like completely winter. So what I'm saying is, it feels like springtime, except I am surrounded right now by a bunch of leaf blowers. Like it sounds like it's fall. And sometimes friends, I'm not gonna lie, it feels like it's fall with this disastrous winter just looming on the, well, I don't know, on the horizon or even closer in fact. This is a confusing time. When I think of the Ten Commandments, there's also some confusion because we are taught them as if they are prescriptive, like what to do in order to live a godly life. Though I think that the Ten Commandments are actually more descriptive, describing our relationship with God and our relationship with one another, more or if not um, at least equal to them being prescriptive for our life. The first of the Ten Commandments goes like this. God says, I'm a jealous God, and I am the Lord your God, and you shall have no other gods before me. And we honor this, I think, and all the benefits that come with life in relationship to God in many, many ways. And we forget this in equally as many ways, sometimes playing God or putting ourselves as God in God's place, sometimes behaving as if we are in charge as if we are the creator or master of creation, maybe even like those leaf blowers outside right now. Or sometimes forgetting the first commandment looks like simple entitlement. Like, who are you to tell me that I can't leave my house? And actually, Fletcher did that a lot in this book. Fletcher was trying to do the right thing. Fletcher looks kind of like a hero, but Fletcher's playing God. And I hear people today do the same thing when we pretend that we are the captain of our own ship or that we can solve all of the world's problems right now. In this season of self-control, the season of Lent, it's humbling to discover actually how brittle we are, we as individuals and certainly we as a society. The world around us is changing, friends. And we, like Fletcher, have a very limited view of God's great design. And so we cling to faith and let go. Oh, we cling to faith and let go. As a great pastor once said, let go and let God. Or in the words of a lesser pastor, let's make like a tree and leaf it up to God. God bless you all. <laughs>